buzzword artificial intelligence is just the overarching technology, but the application of it in, comes in different forms. So one of those and the most popular one is called Welcome to my legal academy, helping lawyers work smart, scale fast and enjoy life. Well, hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the honor and the opportunity for Sam Malai. Thank you for being being on our podcast and our YouTube channel. Appreciate that. Sam. Of course, we're long overdue, Ken. We're long overdue. Yeah, absolutely. So the reason I got Sam here today is I want to talk about artificial intelligence. And uh, I can tell you in our film of masterminds, it's the buzz. I mean, people are trying to figure out what this means. And I've been following Sam and I, he's he's always ahead of the curve. And so I asked him would he be on our podcast and ask her probably the same questions you out there, lawyers like me, how can we best use this? You know, and is it just another fad or is it the best thing since the microchip for computers? So Sam, thank you. And uh, I just like people to tell their story because you've got a unique story. I mean, you've got a fascinating story. So just tell us your story. Sure. So I started my first law firm uh, eight years ago, pretty much uh, right after I passed the bar. And I had a lot of time on my hands in my first year because I didn't have, I don't have any source of clients. So I basically had to teach myself how to generate clients online. And I basically built my first website, taught myself how to do SEO, taught myself how to do Google ads, learned about the landing pages and funnels then got into automations. And luckily for me, I was always an implementer. As soon as I would learn something right away, I wouldn't overthink things. And I started you know, implementing it right away, started seeing results. Then I started, when I started seeing results, I, I started duplicating it over and over again, without really overthinking it too much. Uh, fast forward uh, eight years later, been able to uh, start and grow seven law firms. Uh, three of them are running at multi-million dollars a year. Um, I also have a online academy that I teach lawyers how to also um, grow a successful law firm, how to get more clients, how to set up automations, how to hire a virtual assistants, how to run a virtual automated and scalable law firm. Yeah, then where are you located at? I'm in Los Angeles. Okay. That's a competitive market, my friend. It is. And I would say like, if you can make it out in California or New York and Texas, then you can pretty, pretty much make it anywhere. I, I agree. I agree. That's uh, I would say California, Texas, and Florida are and Florida, by yeah. yeah, they're the, they're the toughest states. That's probably why we have the most members in Pilma from those, especially from Florida and Texas. I don't think people in California know who I am yet, but but we got a lot of people in Florida and Texas. Sure totally. And that's so for us too. Most of our clients come from those uh, coastal states. Um, and the reason is just, just so tough and so saturated. So you really have to be strategic, work with the right people to really make it out and be successful. So just for people like me that are, uh, when it comes to technology, we're just ignorant. Uh, tell us what artificial intelligence is, and then let's talk about the different things that's out there right now, especially uh, reading the newspaper today. Like there's some new things that come out this week. Sure. So the buzzword artificial intelligence is just the overarching technology, but the application of it in, comes in different forms. So one of those and the most popular one is called ChatGPT, which is made by OpenAI and actually Ken, you know who is one of the founders, co-founders of OpenAI? Yeah, Elon Musk. A lot of people don't know that. He's one of the co-founders. Really? Yeah, uh, he's one of the co-founders. Um, and he also, there's another uh, co-founder, Sam Altman. He leads the biggest incubation company in the world. So for him to leave his, you know, his position to lead one of the biggest uh, incubators to now lead this company just shows how revolutionary this will be. So essentially, ChatGPT, uh, what it allows you to do is to conversate with a, a robot, essentially. And it basically takes information that's already out there. And it's able to kind of think and give you what you're asking for. So let's just say it's, it's basically like Google 2.0. Google 1.0 is when you go on Google, you seek information, you get, you get information. But now this takes information and kind of hand delivers it to you and says, this is the answer that you're looking for, or this is the prompt. This is the information that you need. And it basically, it's a whole new wave of be able to decipher and get meaning out of information. And it's been revolutionary. So if you haven't tried it out, just Google chat GPT. Uh, you just have to create an account, it's free. And then just literally go throw random prompts in there, questions or instructions or whatever you could possibly th uh, think about. Um, and when I got exposed to this um, in early December, 
I jumped on it early and I started thinking about and brainstorming about how this could be applied for our law firms. So I started coming up with prompts. These are basically the instructions that you give to the ChatGPT, And these are the prompts that I came up with. One is if you need to draft a contract. So you never, you don't have to rely on a contract lawyer anymore. You can use these. Obviously it still helps to have a lawyer to review it, to make sure that it's okay. But for the most of it, like 80, 90, 80, 90% of the, of the content of the contract go to uh, draft. Second thing you could do is you could review a contract. You could literally ask ChatGPT here, review this contract and tell me exactly what are the three things that I should, you know, I should negotiate for. What are the things that are unfair about this contract? And, you know, you know, whether I should even, it doesn't give you a specific advice, but it will kind of, if you ask it the correct way, then you'll kind of get the, the main points. Other thing you can do is you could do a lot of marketing stuff. You could ask, you could do keyword research. You could uh, have it write emails for you. It could write, help you write your ads for you. It could help you write stories that you, that you can put in your emails. It could help you write uh, press releases. Also for when it comes to social media, it could help you write captions for your Instagram and TikTok, your Facebook captions or any, any type of advertisement. It could also help you write blog articles, long form blog articles that you can, and a lot, of, a lot of times when I share this, a lot of people say, well, doesn't Google know? Well, there are also tools that could go and paraphrase the output that uh, ChatGPT gives you to go um, to pretty much paraphrase it. Also, uh, also it could help you with your YouTube videos. It could help you come up with topics, uh, write the bullet points for your videos, write the script for your videos, uh, create titles, create description, generate tags, and then three other overarching big categories, uh, productivity, you know, when it comes to how to be productive, also health and entertainment. So these are all like little uh, categories and different ways that, that lawyers can use ChatGPT. I've been able to put this list together. I have this with me. If anybody wants it, maybe you can, I'll share it with you and maybe you can share it with your, your audience as well. Yeah. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you're a lawyer and you're looking to work smart, scale fast and enjoy life, right below this video, you'll find a link to book a call to speak to my team. So we can tell you how we've been able to help over 500 law firm owners scale their law firm. Now back to the video. You know, we, 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 we had a lawyer talking to us at one of our meetings at Pilma, and he said he, he, he gave it, he fed it the information on a PI case and said, write me a demand. He said it's the best damn a demand letter he's seen in years. Totally. He said, it had like 15 seconds. So think what that could do for a PI firm. I mean, really. Or, totally. or And plus, what if you got people offshore do it using this and training them how to because it's all about using what i've read and i don't know it's like you said it's really important to know what kind of prompts to do the right prompts the right questions a ask it in the right way or don't you might get something kind of cloudy or something is that right exactly yeah it's all dependent on the specific prompt that you give it and there's an art and the science to this so when i had to come up with these prompts i just said for reviewing my contract so here's my prompt for it Review the following contract and provide me the purpose of the contract, the three most important terms of the contract, the duration of the contract, and what is the consideration is for the contract. That for me was like the main point. If you give me that and clearly lay it out for me, that is pretty much how you review a contract. So yeah, it does take a little bit of uh, thinking to come up with that. But the cool part is, Ken, you could also use ChatGPT to come up with these prompts and you could say, hey, run me a perfect prompt to help me review a contract and you give that back to you and put that back in. So it's pretty cool. Now the thing about chat GPT, and I might be wrong on this, is it only goes up to January 2021. So anything recent, although I think they're coming out with a new version, right? Sometime. Yeah, this this particular version of chat GPT goes up to 2021, as you said. And the other thing, it's limited by just information that's already out there. Right. So it's not coming up with anything creative or anything new. It's just based on that. And then the other limitation is it's not definitely not 100% factually correct. It's usually about 80 to 90% correct. It definitely has to be fact checked for sure. Yeah, that definitely has to be reviewed before it is used. Yeah. So, you know, you got chat GPT and you just give us a lot of different ways you could use it, but you also have something called Dolly. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, the Dolly. Uh, that's a image generator. So you basically based on a prompt, you could say, draw me a camel in, a, in the middle of Antarctica who is uh, juggling uh, tomatoes while he's surfing. And basically it will take 
all the artificial intelligence technology that it has and it will uh, create you a very weird looking image of exactly what you just explained.